All right, how's it going guys? Diggity Ghost here and today I'll be discussing um, summoning a circle. Um, if you don't know, if you like haven't been playing Gwent like lately, um, and today's patch, and this day's patch, seven days ago to be exact, um, they released a reworked version of summoning circles. Like summoning circle, summoning circle got reworked. Um, it used to play, spawn a golden, uh, not golden, spawn and play a bronze card from any faction. And now, um, as you can see here, it's deploy a uh, resilience, a provision card, uh, artifact, resilience, deploy, choose a unit from your deck and set the counter to that unit's provision cost before the end of the turn. Remove a counter from self for each adjacent unit. When the counter reaches zero, Summon the chosen unit from your deck to this row and destroy self. Okay. So, um, Summoning Circle actually essentially got kind of like reworked to its old self where you are able to actually tutor a card from your deck and um, you're able to play two cards. I mean, not play, but essentially place two cards on the board uh, on the same turn. All right. That's actually like Summoning Circle. Very similar to how it, um, how it was. But the different the difference here is that it's actually um, you set a provision first. Like you can't just detour any units you want. Like the old summoning circle was like um, it has like a countdown, not like a countdown, but like a counter that goes up every turn, and it's not it's not resilient. So um, usually you um, the old with the old summoning circle, you just um, placed summoning circle first um, the first practice play. And then at turn like eight or seven or nine, um, you you know choose a unit from your deck, like any unit below that um, wood provision, below that counter or charge. <laughs> Is that, I think it's like counter, and then play that unit, and then you can still play a card from your hand. So yeah, um, this card got changed back to its old self, and I think this is a very interesting topic. Um, uh, kudos to Lerio here, Lerio2, I hope I'm not butchering your name. Um, he made uh, an article about discussing Summoning Circle and how it impacts the game and how it's, you know, how it's currently affecting Gwent. And um, I've read um, the article and to me I think this is like a very interesting point to bring up, to, uh, you know, to brought up in the open and discuss and how, you know, how players feel about the rework of summoning circles because currently not many players actually play summoning circle like um i i believe like some players hasn't really uh, some players haven't really realized how good summoning circle is like how good it can be like being able to play uh, let's say defender and your big engine in one turn is just really huge right and how you it's it's quite difficult to play, and that's why I get it that some players just don't want to deal with it. But at the same time, the payoff of being able to, you know, masterfully play around this card is just absolutely phenomenal. And not to mention its flexibility as well. And it's it's going to get covered in this article, so you know I'll link the page in the description. So if you want to read, go check him out. His I I think like. He's, he's made like all these articles and it's really really interesting topics about Gwent. Like I I, I highly recommend you to check him out. Uh, Lerio GitHub, Lerio Hub. It's very um very interesting topics. And so if you like if you don't really want to read, I like if you like I, I get it right. Like some articles are just too long. You don't really have the time to read them. Like you'd rather ha you know have a YouTube video sped it up for like two two x. And then you just you know you just listen to uh, the person talking, discussing about this. Then I'm here for you. Um, I'm gonna cover everything on this article about the points being made, about I don't know um, how it's affecting the game. I said it already. And lastly, it's gonna be the summarized, uh, the summary, the summarized version of the article. And without further ado, let's just dive straight into it. Okay, summoning circle reworked card analysis introduction. In Gwent patch 10.5, following Forgotten Treasures, I mean, I've, I've um, you know, I, I've covered this already. Let's move on to 
Um, in this article, we will look in depth into this card's capabilities after rework. So what this card is able to do after the rework. And the first point that he made here is um, how, what, what happens if you play Summoning Circle in round three. So in Gwent, there is about 50% chance to find a card exactly in round one. 70% in round 2 and 14% in round 3 assuming no tutor and no thinning. Even for cards um, being of typical use at early stages of the game, it is worth to start analysis from round 3 value, which is in general easiest to assess. Such so scenario will happen in a meaningful percent of the games. So, um, in this, um, with this point, like with this, what does this mean is that um, he's referring to how he's gonna conduct his research. I mean, not research, but how he's gonna, you know, um, determine how exactly summoning circle is end up gonna, uh, you know, affecting the, the game. So, um, tutoring a non-deploy unit. So, you know, with this, I think it's pretty, it's pretty clear that he's referring to summoning circle not being able to tutor, like not being able to play a unit from the deck. It only summons. So cards like, for example, a Siri Nova, um, essentially any deploy cards, like Siri Nova requires deploy to gain resilience. It's really not that great with Summoning Circle. However, um, yeah, he, he makes a point about SC is another possible tutor for VDAC, although it needs to be timed well so that S, um, Summoning Circle tutors only the last V. Otherwise, instant consume is impossible. And so, you know, outside of a rat, so if you tutor a V and you don't time it perfectly, opponent could interact with the V, therefore maybe losing you the game. It requires a very meticulous, um, you know, way of playing with Summon Circle. And I think that's like the um, attractiveness, like that's the mo like the beautiful thing about Summoning Circle is that it's, it's really situational depending on the matchup, right? You can't just like, like for example, if opponent removes one of your body, like what you're gonna do about that? Like you don't have a unit to play, um, opponent's gonna remove a, like adjacent unit from your summoning circle, you know? It's just gonna be really awkward. And I think it's it creates a really interesting uh, matchup variant. And yeah. So with side note here, summoning circle keeps the ID of the chosen unit rather than its characteristics. Even when unit gets transformed, meanwhile, the transform um, form will be summoned with circle. So plays like um, Letho King Slayer. So you play Letho King Slayer. Uh, you, you, you first set up um, summoning circle into a Letho King Slayer in the deck, and then you drew the Letho King Slayer. You play the Letho King Slayer, transform it to another unit. And then after it gets destroyed or around ends, you put it back to the deck with a sire. It could immediately goes back to uh, uh, summoning circle. Will you know pull out the transform Letho King Slayer because it keeps the ID right. Um, they made a point here about transforming a Letho Slayer to a Colgrim, which is kind of like it's it's really a lot of work. And they they say that I'm not sure if you could make any practical use. Like it's it is really a lot of work. I don't think it's gonna see any use, but it is possible, just making sure, you know? Um, second point, signing a unit from the deck with um, summoning circle, transforming this unit into a mysterious puzzle box. You know, um, you, you know, summoning circle, um, let's say any unit, and then you drew the unit, you use mysterious puzzle box, transform it into a uh, lamp box or gin, the thing from the box, and then, you know, you don't play the thing from the box, you put it back to your deck. And then, you know, after the timer expires from the summoning circle, the the thing from the box will come out instead of the original card, right? Uh, same thing with Caldwell. Um, Caldwell transform into a Revenant. I mean, it, it doesn't really have to be Caldwell, right? It's like everything, really. Um, Something you want to tour, transform it with revenant uh, with drug into revenant, and then you put it back with a pavetta. You could, you know, use it back with summon circle. Exactly, really, really, um, some interesting play. 
but it's yeah you know for a lot that that's a lot of work and i don't think it's gonna see any play outside of meme decks it's like it's just really like you know fun interaction really and here they made a point about um summon circle being an engine or a threat overlord uh, overload <clears throat> essentially you know being able to play summoning circle and it's uh it's it's some form of carryover so in like in later rounds especially when you have summoning circle you could actually play two engines in one turn right and that's i think what they're discussing here so let's see as discussed above summoning circle has very narrow pool of reasonable high-end targets the main strategy to get extra value in round three then is by abusing two cards a turn the fact with correct timing it is easy to develop two threats at the same time on the board Unlike in the classical overload, um, 10.4 or 10.5 for example, Stockpile Siege, they made a case that, Circle will not support storming the, the board from the first moves, like, you know, they, they can't, it makes sense, right? <clears throat> One of the first turns will be Circle Play, which is too slow for damage, Engines of our Lord known from Siege. But, you know, you could argue that um, Siege could just, you know, play Summon in Circle round 2, um, get the engine overload in around three. It's it's uh, it's entirely possible. It's it's a possible play. Like you just um, summon a circle in the range row. You play portal. And then you uh, not portal. I mean a siege. And then siege will spawn a unit. Um, was that again? C uh, catapult catapult in the range row and then it will be adjacent to the summoning circle and then immediately a siege engine or something will come out from the deck it's all it's all a form of engine overload i think um yeah sc overload will rely on a sudden burst in the turn um summoning circle is triggered therefore defenders and strong let play engines threats are main targets defenders couldn't rely on deploy effects though which disqualifies uh, Nilfgaard and Syndicate ones, Fion and Azar. In those factions, Defender has to be played from hand. There are two main possible bird setups, Defender plus Engine or Double Engine. So uh, the way um, you use Summoner Circle, I think um, what this trying to, you know, tell you is that it's really good if, you know, you use it to to you know, have two engines, two, uh, having multiple engines on board in the same turn, or play a really good engines while um, summoning a defender to the board, right? And the good defender that could be summoned to the board, um, you know, it's non-deploy defender. So Nilfgaard and SY is not really that good because with Syndicate Azar, you have to deploy to gain the defender, to spawn the defender. You have to um, spend a coin to get the defender and with Nilfgaard if you're summoning Fion you're only going to be summoning a one power unit with two armor that's not really worth it right for a summon circle play um so yeah with monster you can see like combo right like um Koshchi into defender or maybe like she troll into defender like all of this combo you could you could just imagine it like in one turn for example summoning uh, i mean um necromancer's tome and then you know you immediately like you have a unit adjacent to the summoning circle you play a necromancer's tome it thicks and then at the same turn you play double flatter or like you know like all the good stuff it just comes out like all the engines or like double witch apprentice two of them comes out and then the defender comes out and then it it you know it triggers the Sabbath, which in turns make you know the the, the witch apprentice kind of like boost to each of them. And that's really really good. So many plays that could do uh, that you could do with monster. I think someone's circle is actually really good with monster. Uh, you could use it with Fion. You know you play Visigoda. Fion comes out immediately. You know you're, you're getting value in your Visigoda, right? You can make that kind of play. Like, that's a lot of um, situation. So moving on, most engines have some drawbacks when summoned from circle. For example, Arnega doesn't get the armor. Knut cannot wound a target on zeal. Like, because, you know, you summon the Knut, <coughs> uh, you, 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 can't, you can't immediately use the Knut. Sigvald can receive my drones boost. Huh? 
and Roland couldn't get a profit from the unit's poison same turn. And in spite of drawbacks, the raw quality of those engines is the most important factor. For example, of engines not using value or MK, color, Cold Grey, Messenger of the Sea. So with Messenger of the Sea, right, um, it's a beast I, that, you know, boosts itself for rain ticks on the opponent's board. Like, because rain happens on opponent's turn, you can just play Messenger of the Sea. Uh, it comes out, next turn, uh, opponent's turn, the rain's gonna tick, and then it immediately gets the value. Simple as that. Uh, with MK, because, you know, the timer gets, rewor gets reworked, now when, you know, when you tutorial something like MK, which is Apprentice, Colgrim, like all these cards essentially, um, because it, hap it no longer happens at the end of the turn, it happens before the end of the turn, like cards like these, like that has, you know, engines that happens at the end of the turn, is going to get value, essentially. Okay, summoning circle obeys normal order for resolve of effects at the end of the turn, therefore, it is, for example, possible to instantly get an extra unit spawned from Megascope when Eideran is spawned. Uh, provided that you play Eideran in, like, the front row or left side of the Megascope. So, so you know, yeah, Eideran here and then Megascope here. Megascope's gonna summon. Uh, I mean, uh, the, the circle. The circle is on the left side of the Megascope. So, you know, you summon Eideran from the um, the order, right? It's, it goes from top left to bottom right. So when Eideran is on, like, when the summoning circle that summons Eideran is on the left side or the top side of the uh, Megascope, the summoning circle three goes first, summoning Eideran from the board, uh, from the deck, and then the summoning circle, and then the Megascope summons um, the copy of the unit. And then, you know, because Eideran is already on the board, Eideran could, you know, spawn a doomed copy of the Megascope unit. Very, uh, very interesting, interesting um, interaction. So, the second point is um, you could use it as a backup point slam. So let's see here. Um, when the round is short or the deck doesn't make use of engine overload, then point slam targets have to be summoned, probably from mid region of provision cost. Uh, cards which may benefit from summon something like Tibor, Imperial Golem, Precision of Penance. Like if you don't know, all these cards are like the 12 power card, at, uh, 11 power card, 10 power card, Tibor, a 13 power card, Golem, a 12 power card, Precision of Penance, 12 power, Juta, 12 power, Pogo, 11 power, and Greatsword, 10 power, Griffin, the, the list goes on, right? Playing Summoning Circle just as combo with Tibor or Golem couldn't be the game plan, but only a backup. In the case, main um, summoning circle strategy doesn't work for some reason. That's because the combo will play slightly below current power for, uh, versus provision curve. For example, um, Tibor plus summoning circle played for combo will give a 13 points for 8 provision on circle, but including Tibor cost, it will be more like 13 for 13, voluntarily giving up 1 gold from hand to play the combo. I wouldn't advocate playing um, gold point slam targets just for the sake of backup either. The decks in which these appear naturally though will have slightly better summoning circle on average. So um, they're making a point here that um, if you want to use it for point slam, it's not really worth it because uh, like you know, like uh, like they make it like not worth it, but I think it's worth it in some scenario. For example. Um, you play summon a circle round two, like you won round one. Um, you're trying to bleed opponent in round two, and you have a point slam in your deck in round four, round three. Like I think it, like you just play summon a circle essentially for a carryover. But then they have this carryover circle, a carryover circle article, which I think will cover what I what I was about to say then. So let's get right into it. From the round 3 discussion, it becomes clear that Summoning Circle is weak but not terrible. A value card in round 3. Because, you know, um, with round 3 you're only gonna have like uh, 10 turns, most of, uh, like at best, 10 turns to pull something out. And you're wasting a card for a Summoning Circle. Because you could have played the Summoning Circle in round 2, if that makes sense. 
So thanks to the resilient status though, Summoning Circle could, all, could be also played for carryover in earlier rounds, putting Summoning Circle on the board and going for a pass without summoning a unit. Keeping the counter active brings carryover to the next round. Uh, brings carryover to the next round. Just a short comparison with other resilient carryover possibilities, um, Siri Nova, Thunder Griff, and Zoltan Chifai shows that Summoning Circle has great potential. Um, uh, Summoning Circle played just for Griffin outvalues carryover of each one of mentioned cards, while exploiting engine overload could easily lead to much greater value. So yeah, they're talking about um, because you know you're playing like carryover from hand. It's like the same thing as um, uh, for, like for example, you're playing Siri Nova, right? Siri Nova on deploy, it's um, resilience eight points. So Oh, shit. Like, it's like we're, we're strictly talking about the carryover value, right? right? It's just the carryover value. So, with Siri Nova, you're getting 8 carryover. Thunder Griff, you're getting 6 carryover. Zoltan Chifa, you're only getting 4 carryover. But with Summoning Circle, uh, you played on a Griffin, a 9 powered unit. And then next round, you essentially have, uh, have uh, 9 points of carryover. Right, just strictly, uh, strictly speaking, a carryover value. The ceiling of uh, summoning circle played for carryover is hard to assess, but non-worst case floor is shooting a deck would easily be equal to 15 points for eight provisions. Again, only th strictly talking about um, carryover value. Thanks to big potential, carryover will be the main summoning circle application, with all single round plays being just a secondary plan. This brings up the point where you know you're only if you're only trying to play summoning circle for um carry over it will make a really really this is the juicy part right so these that uh, these days there are a lot of tempo decks in round one so what does that mean is that uh, it's gonna get covered here but i want to talk about it like this is like the, the the juiciest part of the article right because there is like, uh, right now, there's a lot of tempo decks in round one. And sometimes, maybe most of the times, you're gonna over tempo. You're gonna over, like, over commit in round one. And that's really not ideal, right? For example, you're like, you're like up 40 points with, uh, to your opponents. If you're playing like a Golden Necker deck. You play all your stuff in round one, you're gonna be up 40 points to your opponent. And then they're just gonna pass, and then you feel bad because... That's how the decks want to play. Like we have Erendite, we want to get ahead of our opponent. We want to dominate the round. And it doesn't really feel good. And having um, Summoning Circle, you can kind of like balance that out, like balance the points that you're gonna use in that round, or the points that's, you know, you like, oh, I don't really wanna use it in this round, I'll just use it on the later round. The carryover point of Summoning Circle, the carryover value of Summoning Circle. So. You know, this Summoning Circle card is actually a double-edged sword for both of these, like, tempo deck. Because in some matchup, you know, you kind of want to just, like, go all in on round one, fight it out, have a last say, or bleed them, go to a short round three, have a great point slam. And then, in some matchup, um, like, you just, like, uh, over over commit, right? That's really not good. And what happens here is that when you are against a tempo deck, when you are against the Golden Necker deck and you have Summoning Circle, you could actually play Summoning Circle in round one. Like just let opponent do like everything they want, play their, like bring out all their roads, their knickers, play all their good stuff. And we're just gonna chill and have like, a, like as many carryover as we can. And Summoning Circle is actually a really good way to do that. So, uh, here's the discussion. Here's the point that he makes. Now, playing Summoning Circle from Blue Coin is a very risky strategy for decks with a weak round one. As I've said, <laughs> uh, Summoning Circle will be zero tempo for one or more turns, which will make losing on even cards a big threat. The situation will be especially troublesome when opponent has engine advantage and point gap narrows with each turn. Dax with weak round 1 could still benefit though if opponent overcommits 
If round 1 is lost uneven anyway, then summoning Circle Kid over for round 2 may come in handy to prevent and prevent opponent from 2 awake. This is like, like you know, the, the, the good part, right? Like, they're making like counters and both like both at the same time counters and support for like Golden Necker deck. It's actually really interesting. Um, like, you could use summoning Circle like very, very flexibly. And I think the devs really, really did a great job on this one. Like, like making a card that synergizes with both, like what you like the enemy and your ally, like it's it's the it's the purpose of neutral card. I, it's neutral card, right? Everybody can use it. Everyone can use it, and I think it's like a really really good design. Like when you when you think about it, right? The card is like it's good for this side. It's good for that side. It's good for everyone. Very nice. Uh, however, the main below coin application will be in strong round one decks, able to out-tempo opponent. Summon circle will be enabled following technique, tempo impasse. If opponent fails behind a tempo so that more than one card is needed for them to close the point gap, then properly play the C could set up an impasse situation. If opponent pass, like what a tempo impasse means, essentially, if opponent passes, then summon circle will be a round to carry over. And if opponent plays a card and blue passes and a card will get summoned from circle in one of the following turns when they try to close the gap, a commitment or going card down is forced. So uh, right now they're talking about um, um, a summoning circle used in a round one dominant deck such as Golden Necker, of course, like a ring of favorite decks most of the time, Arendite decks. Um, tempo Impost, like the blue coin deck, right? Uh, tempo Impost could become a common motif with a summoning circle played as a fifth card rather than a unit. When opponent could not catch up in two cards, would normally pass if any unit was played. So, um, why does the fifth card matter? It's because, you know, if you are blue coin, you ha you play your fifth card, then the opponent has six cards and they're going to play a card. Which means that they need to catch up with just one card after they play their fifth card. And if they didn't catch up with their fifth card, uh, with their like sixth card, they're going to go a card down into round two. I mean, they're gonna go a card down into a long round three, or they go a, two cards down in round two, which is really bad for them, right? Like essentially, they cannot bleed you, because you know, um, if they dry pause, you're gonna play one card, and then round three, you're gonna have ten cards. Opponents gonna have nine cards. It's like um, it's a basic of Gwent, really. Um, how cards work. Maybe I'll make a um, video about that discussing the topic. I think there's already like a lot of them in YouTube. But I'll make them just in case. So. Wait a second. So round two carry over from red coin. So this is um, using summoning circle with a red coin deck, essentially, or a red coin situation. Summon Circle could also work as a great impost reach card in round 1. Whenever an opponent's main line is a round 2 push, it is especially important in current Gwent, where Arendite carryover is of great concern. So they talked about Arendite here, where you know he just um, dominates round 1, stays ahead of your opponent every single turn, gets the Arendite value, and in round 2 you're gonna have like 8 or 9 points of, uh, nine points of Arendite which usually ends up at like uh, 13 to 16 points of Arendite at the end of round 3. Because, you know, your opponent is just able to capitalize on the points that, you know, that they have. You, you know, they... Round 1, they play Cyranova, um, carry over round 2, and in round 2, they just, you know, dominate the round easily with Arendite value, or like any other... Well, because they're going first, they usually win round one, and in round two, they're just gonna push you. Like cards is uh, like card advantage actually doesn't really matter because Arendite. <laughs> so imagine an Arendite mirror where winning round one from red coin would be impossible for you, an opponent. For you, an opponent will only get Arendite charges advantage with time. Uh, with time, this is what they're talking about, right? What I was, what I was talking about earlier. Then, playing Summoning Circle early could set up an impasse situation. Proven you, could, proven you still could give up one card reach. Let's say at 7 cards you play Summoning Circle into Griffin in slot 1 with neighboring unit. If opponent gets out, like, this is like monster, right? Monster situation. So Griffin is only like 5 counters. 
uh, five counters is easily triggerable. Like with five counters, if you have two adjacent units, like with five counters, you play, excuse me, with five counters, you play summoning circle in one, just one adjacent unit. Like in two turns, if you have, if the next turn you, you know, you play a card next to the other adjacent side of um, the summoning circle, you're just, it's just like two more turns until, you know, Griffin comes out and then, you know, it's actually, it essentially becomes a nine point play and not just a carryover. You could use it to, you know, balance out the round if opponent pass. And if they, like, if, if, if you play the summoning circle on the seven card, right? Opponent has to decide whether they want to pass or they want to push. Uh, they want to still keep going with their play. Like if they keep going, um, they're giving the opponent value on the carryover value from the summoning circle. And if they pass, you could just get the value from the summoning circle and go to a long round three where opponent, where you could, you know, it's a balanced situation between your opponent, between you and your opponent. You know, you, like you, the opponent doesn't have uh, the initial advantage of um, carryover. So, if opponent gets out of your one card reach, including summon circle somehow, then you could just pass. Thanks to the summon circle carryover in round two, is what I was talking about. Gruven will jam out soon, which leads to tempo advantage and stop Arendite from from stacking. If opponent passes in round two instead, then Serena Ball could be played for another carryover, and presumably in round three, only your own Arendite will be stacking. They're talking about um, uh, Serena, uh, Arendite mirror. On the other hand, if opponent passes immediately in round one, they could play Nova, which is hopefully in hand, next to circle, and catch up. Like, Nova into summoning the uh, Griffin, right? We're going around to it, Arendite stacking perspective. The play will be bad only if falling too much behind in tempo or gaining nothing from round to carry over, i.e. if opponent has no strategic interest in round to a push. So, uh, like, this only matters if, you know, again, it's a Dax that wants to push you in round two, wants to bleed, like wants to end the game in round two and not necessarily needing to go to a long round three. So this would matter a lot in a especially Golden Necker matchup, um, in a Scoia'tael matchup where they could just easily swarm their boards, get the points in round two. Like, like it, like it, this is not really that good against like uh, super greedy decks like Koschi. I mean, Koschi... They usually like bleed out round two, go to a short round three. Um, I guess Syndicate, because Syndicate really is really good in a long run situation. Like they don't have that much engine, but their control is absolutely superb. They have Philippa, they have um, Horse and Senior. I mean Horse and Frick Show, Horse and Junior, not Senior, Horse and Junior. Um, they have um, Tunnel Drill most of the time. They have Professor. Like they have all sorts of control. In their deck not to mention like the shady fender like shady fender is just like really really good like it's very flexible removal again like you know they have a lot of points that have control in the long run three like like the only like w the matchup that i could think of right now is just like syndicate that doesn't really need um the the, the carryover um situation so uh, round three carryover. The crucial part, without two tours or thinning, there is almost 70% chance to find summoning circle up to round two. Summoning circle could be legitimately played for carryover in round two, only given some circumstances. Forcing round one, tempo pass in round one, or winning the round at five or more cards lets summoning circle to be played at no cost in round two. Decks going for such strategy must be favored in a long round, including summoning circle carryover. Surprise circle. In letter practice, Summon Circle could get a huge value whenever opponent passes at 7 cards after winning round 1, and there is a possibility to win round 2 and play Circle at the same time. But for leaders, spawning tokens, um, i.e. Fruits of Iskith, Arca Swarm, if the surprise strategy could require a pounding opponent with other cards. So they're talking about um, being able to, you know, immediately get 2 adjacent units um, besides the Summoning Circle. And the Brute Force Circle. In decks possessing great carryover possibilities for a short round 3, Summoning Circle could be played in round 2 with full awareness of losing card advantage. The only objective of round 2 play will be then sorting round 3 when establishing maximum carryover. So it's decks like uh, Monster with Osral, 
um, Kashi, like all the great points from that. Uh, maybe even like Savola, um, Savola can go beggars. Like you're just losing a card in round two. That's fine. Um, we're gonna ha we're gonna have um, a tutorial for twelve points for round three. The um, brute, what's the guy again? Not the brute. The hail brother. The the six provision like penit like you could use it on penitence or the other dude like the bounty dude. So it's like twelve points of carryover. You have your leader. You have Savola. You have uh, king of beggars. So that's like a tons of carryover, and they have two more cards to play. Right, so that two cards could be like something like Philippa, Force Engineer, ADC, ADC. Could be everything you want, and not to mention like leader ability as well, right? So you know, brute force circle is actually I think a very legit strategy, and you could even use it for like a Golden Necker deck. Like I don't, I'm not really sure about Golden Necker deck, but you know, you could use summoning summoning circle for like summoning the twelve uh, point card out of your deck. For a short round three, I think it's entirely possible, but we'll see. Um, gimmick circle, unfortunately, it is possible. I mean, with Skelly Gay rights, usually they just thin the deck um, to zero. They usually play Lippy. Uh, like I'm not really sure about like some of the Golden Necker deck, but it's possible. Um, gimmick circle, unfortunately, it is possible to look up summoning circle target by clicking on it. This limits. Oh wait, you know? Oh, you could you could know. So if, if opponent plays summoning circle, you can actually uh, I think right click the summoning circle and then look at the tutorial in it. So you know it's not really a secret. Nevertheless, circle still could be used to do some cool unusual stuff outside improving chances of launching a multi card combo. Circle is capable of effectively protecting the spawned units. It will happen whenever summon unit takes place after opponents reach turn. So let's say you won round one on even cards. You would like to use the final series, like the 10 provision series, to get card advantage after round two if you play her from hand. Then opponent may lock or remove her at their reach turn. On the other hand, if um, their hand, if you set up summon circle in a way that series jumps out after your pass when behind in points. Oh, this is not the 10 provision. It's the nine provision. The series um, deal three damage deploy. The opponent is completely disarmed and has to accept your double loss say dealing with Siri will require playing another card. Embrace me. <laughs> it's actually Bane's idea. Another Timothy card which could be protected this way is Viper, but benefits from round two. Viper are much lower in general. It seldomly manages to jump out because you know opponents playing a lot of cards, takes a lot of time to banish their cards. Makes sense. Better way to gimmick a Viper will be then in round one, leaving opponent with an alternative dealing with Viper or losing a card for round two push. Okay, so here's the summary. I'll read it. To sum up, Summoning Circle is a card with great potential. It should be used mostly for carryover play, where it could easily reach value above power versus provision curve. The possibility of using this card for surprise value could be a bit unhealthy in the future in closed deckless environment. In the current 10.4 or 10.5 state of very aggressive play with Arendite, it will probably be less of an issue. The design is very risky for potential abuses, but also rewarding a good, uh, re rewarding for good timing and matchup knowledge to some extent. A very, con a very fun card. Another issue with Summoner Circle is a lack of good artifact tutors. Which would mean playing on Neuromancy, trying some complex tutoring methods, or simply relying on good luck and drawing Summoning Circle at the right time without extra tools. The effective power gap between Summoning Circle found early and found late is easily game decisive. Especially in Arendite reality, Avaloxe seems to deserve a buff after reworking this card. Right. Unless they, they didn't have time to play the Summoning Circle outside training mode. So they want to know if there is some wrong remarks. I don't think so far there is anything that, you know, that's wrong with what they're saying. I think it's, um, it's very fairly accurate. So yeah, I think that's going to be, I'm going to wrap it here. Like this, I think is very um, interesting. Um, like being able to use this card, like, like you know, you, like, Playing this card in later rounds feels really bad, but at the same time, if you manage to draw it in round one, you are uh, you are able to effectively get some carryover value while keeping your um, reach 
in range in round one. If opponent pass, you could just play Jess and units, forget the cooldown, boom, nine points come out, as is the case with Griffin. Or you could just use it for a carry over to prevent opponent from out tempoing you, um, or you getting your Arundite value in an Arundite mirror in round two. It's really really nice. I don't know. I, I really like I really like the design of this card. And the, like the most important thing is that you cannot use this in a unitless deck anymore. <laughs> thank God. Thank goodness. Um, no more unitless deck. I think uh, Syndic. I mean uh, C CDPR has been cracking down on unitless. Like very very harshly, like you you, you can't actually use uh, unitless on this card again, um, which is like really really, this card is, the design is actually like really really good. I really love it. Anyway, I think that's gonna be it for the video. Um, let me know what you guys think about summoning circle in the comments below. And yeah, um, if you like the video, like it, subscribe, comment, share anything, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.